This is a Northern Electric Model 5000, uh, which is a very common uh, radio model that you find in Canada. Uh, it's in the Baby Champ series, and uh, colloquially, this is known as the Waterfall or the Rainbow uh, model because of these this little rainbow here. I see there's a little chip out of this one. I just picked this one up locally. This is the third one that I have. So I have three in various uh, condition. And uh, I haven't opened this one up yet. Uh, so we'll take a look. You see that the back is warped. And that happened to another one that I have. And that uh, actually damaged the loop antenna back there. So hopefully this one is okay. Interestingly enough, it looks like these are all the original screws. Hmm. So, let's take it apart. This is, of course, your standard five-tube All-American 5, as it's known, All-American 5 radio with a complement of a 35Z5, uh, 35L6. 35Z5 is the rectifier, 35L6 power tube, 12SA7, uh, 12SK7, and 12SQ7. So that very common combination of five tubes. And there's the baby champ symbol here. And we've lost our CSA marking. So anyhow, let's take it apart and see what we're looking at. Okay, so... Well, we'll have to test those tubes that are all there. I love this little uh, propeller tile. And it uh, looks like we have a bit of a tear in the speaker cone. So we'll have to repair that. And this might be a little bit warped, that loop antenna. We'll see whether that affects the reception or not. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Let's see what we're dealing with underneath. Okay. So, I believe that that's a replaced power supply filter capacitor. And you can see that this paper wax capacitor here is quite messy as these. So these are going to have to come out. That may be a replacement. A sprig. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> so, that power resistor has blown its guts. That's the first time I've ever seen that. That's amazing. Wow. So, we're going to have to find a high watt resistor to put in there. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll be back in a few minutes. Let's take a look at the Northern Electric Model 5000 Service Bulletin. Northern Electric was a Canadian company, first founded in Montreal in 1895, believe it or not, uh, and then became Northern Telecom and uh, then Nortel, which in Canada was infamously involved in a major bankruptcy scandal, if you like. You can see the little map of Canada here. So this is described as a mantle radio using a five tube superheterodyne circuit. It's interesting that this shows a white radio. All three of my Model 5000s are brown and that's by far the most common color you'll find. I've never actually seen a white one, but they presumably exist. And we see here the famous waterfall or rainbow grill that gives this model its nickname and the cool little propeller dial pointer. Then we have the schematic, which annoyingly doesn't give the component values, but only component numbers for reference. We'll return to this in a moment. And uh, then we have a labeled photo showing the components. And alignment directions and a parts list. And we can see from this parts list that the power supply filter cap can includes a 20 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts and two 
40 microfarad capacitors rated at 150 volts. And we also see that the 2 watt resistor that blew out its guts is 82 ohms. Okay, so back to the schematic. As I said, this is your standard 5 tube radio, commonly known as the All American 5, even though this is all Canadian. Uh, there's no power transformer, and the filaments of the tubes are in series. So we have a 35 volt rectifier, a 35 volt power tube, and three 12 volt tubes the mixer, IF amp, and detector slash AF amp. So that's a total of 106 volts, approximating the wall voltage. Another common configuration uses a 50 volt power tube for a total of 121 volts. So in this case though, that 82 ohm resistor would also be in series with the filaments and would be contributing to the total load. In fact, my guess is one of those tubes shorted and uh, took that resistor with it, but we'll test them and find out. So here's the antenna, which is tuned by the variable capacitor that's gained with this variable capacitor that tunes the oscillator coil right here. And that antenna signal is mixed with the oscillator signal in this 12SA7 tube, which produces the 455 kilohertz intermediate frequency that's uh, modulated in accordance with the incoming signal. And that's your amplitude modulation or AM. And it's that mixing of signals to a standard frequency that's, uh, that makes this a super heterodyne radio. That intermediate frequency signal or IF is filtered by this first IF transformer and then amplified by the 12SK7 and further filtered by the second IF transformer. And the detector half of the 12SQ7 tube converts that modulated intermediate frequency back into an audio frequency signal, which it then amplifies and sends off to the power tube for further amplification before hitting the output transformer and the speaker. There's also an automatic volume control circuit between the 12SQ7 and IF transformer that provides negative feedback to dampen the signal when it's strong. Okay, so now let's get back to the actual unit. Okay, so I have my trusty ICO667 tube tester here and uh, start testing the tubes. I'm not going to bore you with all of them, but uh, we'll start at least with the rectifier tube, the 35Z5. And that looks like it's going to be okay because I can see the filament heating up. So the first thing I will do is we will check for that. Well, that all looks good. So let's check the power on that. I bet you it's going to be just fine. Yeah, it's great. So we're good. So I'll come back after I've tested the other tubes. Well, it always happens. Um, the 12SQ7, which is the combined uh, second detector and AF amplifier tube, which is a tube that takes an awful beating and it's always the one that goes bad. And this one has a horrible, basically a dead short between the heater and the cathode. So that's not a good thing. Obviously we're gonna have to replace that tube. And the other tube that's uh, not doing well is the 12SA7 which is the uh, the mixer tube or the converter tube as it's known and that's uh, fairly weak it's working but it's 47 and so it's, it's certainly in the replace um, range the power tubes 87 which is okay it's not super strong but it'll work and the 12 sk7 is great at 128 so i'm going to replace this one for sure and we might replace this one we'll see what i have in stock uh, onward and upward. Yeah, I mean, it figures. This is just, you know, further proof that the 12S Q7 is the one that takes the worst hit. I have tons of 12S K7s and 12S A7s. 
and <laughs> my three 12 SQ7s leak, no good. Uh, second diode, dead, no good. And why did I keep these dead tubes? And then this one, 40, 36, and 14, so super weak. I could stick this one in just to see if I can get the radio working, but uh, I'll probably have to steal one from another, another radio for now. Oh well. Here's the plan. All of these paper wax capacitors will be replaced with these modern polypropylene caps. This electrolytic filter capacitor will be replaced with these smaller electrolytics, modern ones. And in the original uh, repair job, they uh, used a two cap multi-can and then they used one of the original caps from this, the original multi-can. So um, we'll be replacing that. And then this power resistor will be replaced with this modern two watt resistor. So here we go. Well, there you go. So all this work is done. Um, I used the original retaining ring here for these electrolytic capacitors. And I like to use this uh, white spaghetti covering to uh, prevent shorts in uh, most cases. And then it's just some, uh, some heat shrink to hold these things all together. And uh, we have the little 22 microfarad cap in here that's replacing the one that was in the original multi-cap uh, can. And all of the capacitors are in. I haven't changed any of the resistors except for this one or the smaller capacitors. Uh, in my experience, while they, the resistors will drip, these mica caps are usually good. Um, the resistor values will drift. Usually it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I do kind of just check to see whether they're within a, a reasonable range. So I think all that work's done and we're ready to um, apply power to this thing and see what happens. So as usual, I'm going through a light bulb limiter, a variac, and an isolation transformer. So we're trying to be safe here. And I've replaced the 12SQ7 with one stolen from another radio and uh, replaced the Type 47 bulb. So, bring up the power slowly. I find usually it starts kicking in at around 90 volts. Of course, it takes some time for the tubes to warm up. But we do have power at least to the, to the light bulb, which tells us that the... Oh, there we go. Now let's see whether we can get... Wow! Hey! So we're getting something. That's not bad at all. We'll have to do an alignment. Because of course I'm acting as an antenna here. Alright, well, we'll do an alignment and uh, I think we've got a working radio. Okay, Great. so we have our signal generator uh, hooked up and for now I'm just going to adjust these intermediate frequencies um, transformers. These uh, slugs here. And I have the uh, multimeter hooked up to the output. So we're trying to peak that uh, AC voltage. And we'll start with this. Right there. Always use a non-metallic tool to adjust this because the, the uh, metal will act as an antenna and mess up your readings.
That's pretty good right there. All right, so let's see what kind of reception we get now. Probably improved reception. There you go. So there's a nice little waterfall radio brought back to life.